technology represents the human being tools, tools that help human beings to progress, to create comfort, or to understand and define the environment. An extension of the five senses. So, technology is an extension of human beings. Do not forget that. Unfortunately, in the current system, the monetary system, much of the technology, has been transformed into the composition of individual social image and often, they see themselves, or others, through the objects they possess. Therefore, the impression of total dependence of technology, telephone, car, house, computer, internet. A true picture would be this. Again, do not forget, the technology is an extension of human beings. Automation. We have shown how almost any job can be automated and this automation lead directly to abundance. But, to achieve abundance, besides automation, you need materials. To get an idea about materials needed, that are the planet resources, you have to make a survey over the planet, a thorough analysis of the planet's resources. Then, put this in relation to population growth rate. How a certain survey is the basis for an intelligence system in any environment, but the monetary system is not based on it, we must relate the products that are manufactured today. Food. Types of food. Millions of types of food in the present, several hundred thousand of the same type, produced by different companies. Sweets. Millions of types of candies, several hundred thousand products are identical but produced by different companies. Drinks. From alcoholic drinks, soft drinks or milk, here also are millions of types of drinks, and some hundreds of thousands of identically products created by different companies. Animal food. Hundreds of thousands of types of foods for animals in a system designed for the human species, but in which Tens of thousands of people die daily from hunger. How a man would need two, three meals a day and one, two liters of water. These products could be restricted to only a few thousand types, but for everyone. If you can produce millions of types of foods, drinks, sweets or food for animals, it means that material to build food exists. That, plus the fact that in the monetary system is throwing tons of food daily. These, combined with permaculture or mariculture, can create an abundance of food and a variety of them. Other materials. Various construction materials. You must take into account here, all unnecessary objects from the monetary system, which are still produced. Decorative objects, recycling machines, if objects would be of the highest quality, then it will decimate the recycling machines. Entertainment items, from football stadiums that are about 70, 80,000 seats, 
to million of musical instruments. Amusement parks, objects for animals, special cages, clothes or other objects designed for other beings on this planet. That in a system created for the human race in which millions of people have nowhere to stand, or what to dress. Thousands of houses or buildings, not used. Whether they are private, only for certain events, or they are simply empty waiting to be occupied by people with money. Millions of types of clothing, in a world of fashion. Reuse existing and necessary objects, and focus on utility in the production of new objects. Energy. Energy is vital to the technology. From lighting, to most devices that you own, cars or any equipment, everything is powered by energy. Energy is a quantity that indicates the ability of a physical system to perform work when going through a transformation from one state to another state in the chosen reference state. Energy is a state function. Currently, oil is still used to power these machines, but oil is a substance that is found on planet Earth, and unfortunately it's exhaustible. Currently there are so many types of renewable energies that only an extremely harmful system can stop an abundance of it. Solar energy. Ocean thermal energy conversion. Geothermal energy. Bloom energy. Wave energy. Bioenergy. Biofuels. Biomass. Tidal power. Wind power. Compressed natural gas. Nuclear power generator. Human power. Etc. To get an idea, you can consider only two such types of renewable energies. Geothermal energy. Geothermal energy gives us a steady supply of electrical power with minimal environmental impact. Here is the basic process. Water in underground reservoirs is heated to high temperatures by magma. Production wells drilled up to 10,000 feet below the Earth's surface tap into this hot fluid. Under its own pressure, the fluid flows through these wells toward the surface. As it travels, the pressure lessens, causing a small amount to become steam. Together, the hot fluid and steam move through a surface pipeline to a wellhead separator where the pressure is reduced. Here, most of the fluid vaporizes and flashes into high-pressure steam. Any fluid not flashed into steam moves to a standard pressure crystallizer to produce standard pressure steam. Remaining fluid is then flashed at a lower pressure to create low pressure steam. All steam created in the plant is sent to a turbine on site. The force of the steam spins the turbine's blades, which turns a shaft connected to an electrical generator. An electrical charge is created and directed to a transformer where the voltage is increased and sent down power lines. Any fluids not flashed into steam return to the underground reservoir where in time they will be reheated and reused. Geothermal energy, a simple, clean and renewable energy source. and solar energy. Sunlight is made up of tiny packets of energy called photons. Every minute, enough of this energy reaches the Earth to meet the world's energy demand for a whole year. Photovoltaic panels consist of many solar cells. These are made of materials like silicon, one of the most common elements on Earth. The individual cell is designed with a positive and a negative layer to create an electric field, just like in a battery. As photons are absorbed in the cell, 
their energy causes electrons to become free. The electrons move toward the bottom of the cell and exit through the connecting wire. This flow of electrons is what we call electricity. By combining solar cells and photovoltaic panels, we can produce just the right amount of electricity to perform a specific job, no matter how large or small. How many solar panels would it take to power the entire world? The entire surface of Africa, maybe. Actually, it's surprisingly less. Just 496,905 square kilometers. That's really nothing compared to the total world area, less than the surface of Spain, 504,030 square kilometers covered with solar panels, distributed across deserts and areas with almost 24 7th sun, all year around. Both can provide the electricity necessary for the next thousand years. Energy is more than abundant, only an extremely harmful system can stop an abundance of it. Um, but what's really exciting is this mashup, this technological mashup that's starting between energy technology, information technology, building technology, and vehicle technology that's starting to come together in some very, very powerful ways that's creating opportunities really in almost every industry. And, and, and the, re the parallel really is to what's happened in computing over the past 50 years. So here's the history of computing over the past 50 years in under a minute. You ready? started off with a big uh, mainframe like this surrounded by a bunch of dumb terminals. Right? And over time those terminals got smarter and, and more self-sufficient and better able to have a two-way conversation with the mainframe and eventually to have a conversation with pretty much everything. Uh, the mainframe is off there somewhere, now it's, uh, it's in the, the cloud. And, and, and then eventually to be able to be connected with just about everything that we have now that's electronic and a lot of that is happening wirelessly. Right? That's kind of the history. And that happened because of thousands of innovations by hundreds or maybe thousands of companies that brought down the, the price and improved the efficiency of, of broadband and, and microprocessor speed and wireless and storage and everything else to the point that we no longer think, at least in the developed world, how much time we spend doing this or doing this, that information is almost free. So what's the parallel? Well, there's your mainframe. And with all due respect to the nice people from Nokia, we're sitting in one of the dumb terminals. This is where we live, it's where we work, it's pretty much every building out there. And increasingly, these, these dumb terminals are gonna get smarter and more self-sufficient and better able to have a two-way conversation, not just um, among themselves and with the mainframe, but among our cars and, and, and local uh, uh, distributed sources of power and a whole range of other things. And, and eventually, a lot of that's gonna happen wirelessly. And so the conversations that, that's taking place in, in Silicon Valley and in the Silicon Valleys of the world is what are the thousands of innovations and the companies that are both existing now and haven't yet been born that are gonna bring down the price and improve the efficiency of, of energy to the point that it becomes so cheap and ubiquitous and efficient that it's almost free. And that's a conversation that is not just a pipe dream. That's a conversation that's taking place and a lot of the pieces of that are now being built, some by those companies that I showed earlier, some by a, lot, a whole range of startups. That, by the way, is 180 degrees from drill baby drill. It's about energy as abundance, not energy as, as scarcity. Artificial intelligence Biotechnology, nanotechnology, renewable energy, intelligent transportation, 3D printers, synthetic biology, supercomputing, mariculture, permaculture, internet. Report this to the fact that a human being need food to survive, and conditions to progress. Technology is more than capable automation can be achieved. 
abundance the same. Technophobia Many people are scared when it comes to technology, because they think that with more technology is advanced, with more we will be at risk because of it, because of the capacity of robots to take decisions. 1. If you are somehow influenced by movies, then you should do an analysis to yourself, to see why you got into this situation. 2. You grew up in a competitive environment, where you had the illusion that there are bad people, and you think will be a competition between you and machinery. Much mysticism, mystery and a deep gap between you and real information. It is normal for you to create such scenarios. In addition to this, some people invent robots after the human body, which is totally wrong. Both in terms of utility and technology. 3. If you have not noticed, you are driven by technology. Think about airplanes that are almost entirely automated, robotic. Machines, cellular, fridge, internet, medical machines, you are dependent of those, and, I do not think that you suffer because of them, by contrary, you benefit. When you last feared that your microwave will explode, how many attacks with gas cylinder have you seen? How many times have you relied on GPS or Internet? Have you ever doubted the medical tests? A computer ever tried to kill you by using high-frequency sounds through speakers? You have a lot of knives in the house, they do not seem dangerous to you? How many times have you wanted to kill with them? Have you feared when you traveled with airplane because of software errors? You trust in electronic clock. What if your fridge will contaminate food overnight? Technology is part of your life, the rest are just illusory stories. Why can you not contemplate positive scenarios? Think about that. I was just reading an article that uh, was released by the Pentagon and there working on semi-autonomous killing machines that can not only kill at their discretion, they can actually consume organic matter and turn it into energy. So, to put it very caustically, they can kill somebody and then the machine can consume the person and it can power the machine. If you can't think of anything more horrifying than that. Yeah. It sounds a little bit like the system we live in now. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Good point. There's many lives are consumed. Yeah. All, all these um, movies on the future that are so horrifying are really just an extrapolation of this system into the future. Look at it this way. Think about a couple of cavemen arguing about fire, right? And one guy says, fire, we can, you know, it could burn down our whole village. And the other guy says, nah, this fire stuff is impossible. And the third guy says, yeah, but it makes good food, you know, you can cook stuff and it tastes, I really like this fire stuff. And, and you can scare off the bears. It really, it really helps. And so the question is, how do you deal with this new technology called fire? Well, it turns out fire is dangerous. You can burn down villages. And we've got fire departments for the very explicit purpose of making sure our village does not get burned down. And we have fire extinguishers. And there are a whole bunch of rules and regulations about how you deal with fire. But we find that the advantages of fire, the benefits of fire, are huge and the risks when you analyze them when you look at them are risks that can be mitigated by various strategies which we adopt and we roll forward and do it so I, I think that's a sort of an analogy machines don't have attitudes they don't have ambition if you take your glass up and smash it in the front of 50 other computers <laughs> They don't care. Machines have no ambition. They don't want to control people. This is a human projection into machines that comes from Hollywood. And they try to turn people against machines. Don't forget, guided missiles are guided by people. 
And when people drop bombs over cities, it isn't machines dropping bombs over cities. People contaminate the ocean, the atmosphere for profit. It's people that have allowed the world, not machines.